Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show. Yes, we are back and today we are having, a, Marta, I wanted to say that we are having a very special episode with a very special guest, but this is what I say every single time and I know that it's almost like a running joke. So maybe I will start differently. Today we have something new. So instead of us interviewing uh, our special guest, today I will interview Marta. Marta, how do you feel about this? I feel different than usual, you know. Now I am here in another role, so this is exciting. I think it's exciting because uh, I realized that we have never been on the other side, right? I never gave an interview, did you? Not that I remember of, to be honest. Well, actually, no, in the TV we did. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful <laughs> interview, something that uh, was just blew my mind, actually. Uh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, we were slightly like asking the TV host if she could hide it and to never show it to anyone in public. Yeah, uh, well, you know, when they say sometimes that you have a radio face. So that was one of those moments when at least I was feeling like I have definitely a radio face and I should not show myself on TV ever again. I think it was a kind of a surprise and trauma in the same time, but I think we grew stronger out of it. We focused on the radio. However, we are sometimes making some videos from time to time. And actually, this whole idea started with a video because a couple of days ago, our wonderful Marta, who is my wonderful co-host and co-producer of You've Got Five Options, has recorded a video, a video who was then posted both on LinkedIn and Facebook. And in this video, Marta has announced that she has quit her corporate job in order to, Marta, please correct me if I'm wrong, follow her heart and start her own business. That's quite correct, yeah. That's quite correct. So the video became, I would say, viral in our own group of friends or colleagues because I was actually looking at the comments that people have put under the video and they were like, oh my God, you're so brave. You are my hero. How did you do it? And I think, Marta, is it true that you have received actually a couple of messages from people asking you about how did you do it? Yeah, it's quite amazing since I have signed the resignation and it became official at work, in my network, uh, on social media. A lot of people have come to me either face to face or through messages or uh, publicly as comments that they really have been thinking about it. They would love to do something like that or that they think that this is very brave to do. So, yeah, probably nothing I've ever posted or done have had such a big reaction from the people that I know. Yeah, and I think that uh, this basically was that main indicator for me that this is a really worthy topic to talk about. And I know that you also wanted to talk about this because you've noticed the same. Because first of all, well, we are directly re responding to all of those people who are asking Marta, how did she do it? So you are willing now today to share your story, right? Yes, exactly. And the second thing that I am personally also interested in is that we have noticed with Marta this trend of people now uh, thinking about becoming their own bosses, uh, opening their own business, being entrepreneurs. And I believe that on some level, this is very romanticized and uh, sometimes it sounds easier than it is. I will give you an example. So there is quite a number of different adverts that I uh, came across over uh, last year on Facebook, which only makes me wonder how Facebook know 
what I am googling. Well, this is a stupid question. Of course, Facebook knows everything. So, uh, you know, if I was uh, googling something like starting your own business, then I was getting advertisements from coaches who were telling me that in one or two months they will tell me how to sell my first I don't know how many products or that if I will take this training or this master class then after three months I will make six digits so uh, you know at the beginning I was curious but then I realized that this is giving a very weird impression for people and I think especially for younger people And they think that, you know, yeah, I will take a training. It's so easy because it it looks very tempting. You know, you see all those guys or those women happy sitting on a beach with laptop. Yeah, I quit my job and now I am actually happy. And, you know, in half a year I earned a million or whatever I did. Is it possible? I think in very weird uh, and unique circumstances, yes. But I believe that entrepreneurship and making a decision like that requires way more than taking a two-month course. I think it's a hard work on yourself, on your business, on your idea. And I believe it's truly possible. But I would also like to, for you guys today, to show what does it take to go on the other side, that it's possible, but what does it really, truly means. Marta, are you up for it? I'm definitely up for it. Do you have any thoughts to what I just said? So I think that this is quite a complex topic Mm -hmm. because I think that there are two sides of the same coin. So there is one side that you can see for certain people like, yeah, I'm just going to quit my job and I'm just going to make my business and I'm going to be rich in two months or six months or whatever. But there is the other side, the one that I have been much closer to, meaning the side that is like, it's too hard to have your own business. So I'm going to keep on working, doing this job that I actually hate doing or strongly dislike doing just to earn money on a paycheck every month. And people actually, because they believe it's so hard to start your own business. So they don't choose to follow their heart. They don't choose to transition to do something that they would love doing. But it's like two sides of the same coin and neither being too optimistic without knowing your facts, nor being too pessimistic without knowing your facts is a good approach here. So, yeah, that. That's what I was thinking. Uh, Thank you, Marta, for that. And I actually believe that this is the the whole key, the balance, because, you know, as you noticed and as you mentioned and as you know from the conversation you had, there are so many people that think this is way too hard. This is impossible. This is just a stupid dream. And I believe that some of those people would be able to succeed if they would have a certain mental preparation, certain coaching advice or just even, you know, getting that limiting belief reduced in their head and trying, at least trying. So I totally agree that for some people, this is like, okay, this is stupid. This will never work. I will never do it. And then there is the other side when you see all of those commercials and you see all of those coaches or all of those advisors commercializing, advertising to you that, listen, buy my course or I will tell you, give you 10 secret tips on how to become a successful entrepreneur in three months. And some people are buying that. And I believe that there has to be a balance. So today we will actually talk about what it really takes. What is the truth? Because we have a here a Marta who is an example that you can go on the other side. So I was thinking how to do this interview because this is the first time we are doing something like this. Usually we are interviewing guests on the live show. This is the first time when we are pre-recording a program like this. So I thought that I will actually use my own uh, branding model that I came up with, which has a glorious and fantastic name, which is getting your shit together. And it is shit literally, but also it is an acronym for S, story, H, honesty, I, idea, and T, tribe. And this is something that I am using with uh, people who are asking me for advice uh, or some sort of a coaching regarding their branding. And uh, I believe that this is a perfect model 
to actually start thinking about your business and how you would like to present yourself to others. But I also think it's a fantastic model for an interview because what I will ask you in a story, Marta, and what I would ask anyone who would like to start a business is why are you doing what you are doing? Where did the idea came from? What is motivating you to actually, you know, make this change and start your own business? What is the story behind it? Who are you as a person? In age, honesty, we will be talking about the authentic you. So I uh, have noticed that many people, when they start their own business, they think that they have to pretend to be someone else. So we see those idols or people who made it and we think that, okay, I have to do exactly what that person did. I have to use the same branding or marketing or I have to have a website who looks like this and then I will succeed. But uh, the thing is that if you are copying someone else, then you are just a copy of someone else. So in honesty part, where I will ask you, Marta, some questions about you and who you are as a person, I am focusing on discovering who you truly are and what can you bring with your personality to others. Because in the end of the day, people will call your bullshit. They will see that you are not you. Marta, how does it sound so far? It sounds very good. I love your model. So I'm just listening about it again. So it's great. Go on. And then in idea, which is I, uh, we will talk about your product. And I know it sounds boring, guys. Yeah, my product, uh, not necessarily a part of my story. Well, it is a part of your story because we need to know why your product or your service will change the world for your client. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean, Marta, that you will change the entire world. But if we want to sell something to someone, we need to know what is the value of that thing for that person. So how this thing will change improve their world, right? And I also many times meet people who have an idea about their product and then they have a problem with exactly explaining what their product or service is. Why is it different? Why should I buy it? And this part will help us to actually discover that. And then we have the last one, which is T for tribe. So here I usually uncover with uh, people what is their ideal client but also how network that you have around you can support you, can help you, and how can it enrich your start into the business. So this is my getting your shit together model, but this is you've got five options. So Marta, what is missing? There is number five missing as shit only has four letters. So Yeah, Uh, as you have noticed. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking and I thought, what else can I ask Marta? And I thought I will ask her about the future. Actually, what are her future immediate plans? What are her visions and so on? And then I realized that future is F. So how to combine shit and F together? Well, you make a shift. And this is when I realized that we are having a quite interesting interview model, which is called the shift interview model. When Marta, I will ask you about your story, idea, tribe, honesty, and future. How does it sound? Sounds very good. (sighs) Okay. I lost my breath a little bit because I was very excited presenting that. So we will start with your story, Marta. And just to have a warm up. Guys, by the way, I know Marta since more than I would like to admit. Uh, But I will try to ask the questions that I would find valuable for everyone to meet her a little bit better. So, Marta, I will start with a question that you actually like to ask people. Who did you want it to be when you grew up? So that's the question that is quite tricky for me because I actually never knew who I wanted to be when I grow up. So it's been frustrating for me for as long as I remember that I actually have never had an idea how to answer that question. So I remember things I enjoyed doing as a child, but I never had this like, I want to be a politician or I want to be a police officer or I want to be a doctor or whatever. I don't remember any of those. Really? So uh, that's actually quite interesting because usually we all remember some sort of a thing that we had envisioned as kids. But then maybe I would ask you, 
as you were a teenager already, did you started to have some sort of a idea or a shape of your future? How would you like your professional life to look like? I know it's still young, teenage, but we already have some sort of ideas, right? Yeah, and I did have many. And I remember that at some point I really wanted to be a psychologist because I really wanted to help people. I wanted to help people overcome their problems. But at that point of time, I remember that I thought I am not good enough. I am too weak to be able to uh, help other people overcome their problems and traumas and so on. So I completely parked it. I just deemed myself, you are not good enough for doing that. Can you explain me what do you mean But I'm too weak to help people? people uh, did do you mean so it was on several layers or levels so to speak one of them was that i would be when people would come to me and talk about their problems i would worry too much so if you get personally engaged in somebody's story and in somebody's problem you lose your objectivity and therefore you can't help because you take that issue and you translate it to yourself and you're impacted by the issue. So that's how it was going on for me. When someone would come and share their problem with me, I would be personally impacted. And therefore, I think it would impact my ability to actually help. And uh, also, I simply, you know, since I had my problems, how could I help others uh, solve problems? When I was young, I thought that before you are able to be someone like a psychologist or a psychotherapist, you should first fix yourself, right? before you can go ahead and fix others. So that was the understanding that I had when I was young. Okay, that's quite interesting because then again, we also hear that people who go into psychology and psychiatry are those who actually need help the most and they are trying to self-heal themselves. So, uh, but you are right. I think that uh, that's, that's quite also a normal perception that if I'm supposed to help people, I should be perfect let's say right but if we are in a teenage years then i would actually like to ask you how would your friends describe you back then oh my god that's a killer question to ask and it's very difficult to answer let me try to think about it i guess my friends would describe me as someone with high energy someone with good sense of humor, someone that has some sort of leadership skills and uh, would like to lead people towards some sort of a direction. And I guess also someone to have fun with. I think that that, that's just what came to me. Yeah, I can confirm, especially the leadership skills, because I was uh, with Marta in the same high school class and you were the president of the class. I don't know how many times. But you were and you always took that kind of managerial roles. Um, And I will ask you that question again when we will go back to your more mature part of life. But um, as you could probably remember, we were born in Poland, both of us and raised in Poland. So now the interesting part is how did you actually end up in Denmark? And I would like to ask you, how did you actually transition here? So I came to Denmark as a student first time. I came for a student's exchange and I chose Denmark because my favorite writer wrote a few books uh, based in Denmark. And Denmark just sounded so cool in those books. So I wanted to go and see this land that my favorite writer has described in so many books that I have enjoyed. And I came, I did some fun and studying and working at the same time. Really great experience. And I met my husband. Then I left. And then I actually came back to Denmark because my husband was headhunted by a Danish company. And that's why we have decided to come here. So basically, we could say that that was um, an accident. It wasn't a planned decision that you would like to live in Denmark. It was by the family circumstances, right? By your husband's decision to, to take a job here. Yeah, we found a few countries that we thought would be good for our family. We are a multicultural, multilingual family, so we chose a few places that we could go after. So Denmark was on the list. So it was okay for us to come here. So how was the transition from Poland to Denmark? Oh my God, that was so tough. (laughs) (laughs) It was really, really tough for me. Uh, when I came uh, to Denmark as a mom, 
with a small child who already spoke two languages and needed to learn Danish. And it was so hard on him because he could not communicate. And my husband would travel a lot. And I was often alone uh, with a sick child that could not be happy in the kindergarten. So it was actually quite tough at the beginning in Denmark. Yeah. Okay, but uh, so you mentioned that you moved here and you were taking care of your uh, child. Uh, Did you work? Did you find a job from the very beginning or did you have to struggle? So uh, with the job, it was a conscious decision that I will not start working from day one as we had a small child that did not speak the language of the country and so on. So it was a conscious decision that I will not get a job before we come to Denmark. And uh, I was finalizing my master thesis. So I took this as a decision that I will first come and finalize my master's degree. And I got an internship at the company where I could write my master thesis. But getting a paid job was extremely difficult. It was the time where the crisis was completely, you know, on top and getting a job was nearly impossible. And majority of the network that I did in the first year in Denmark has left Denmark because no internationals that I knew were able to get a job at that point of time. Wow. Yeah, it was it was really, really tough. 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those years were really, really tough for internationals here. But you uh, have finally managed to find a job after some time and you found it in a company where you were writing your thesis, right? Yeah. So, Marta, tell me, that job that you got at that time, is this the job that you have left? So that's the company that I have left. Of Mm -hmm. course, over uh, years I have evolved and tried working in different parts of the company as the company is quite large. But I felt like the luckiest girl on the planet when I got that contract at work. I used to love this job, definitely. Yeah, I I would say that you have telepathically uh, just read my question because I actually wanted to ask you, you know, how did you feel when you got the job and you said that you were, yeah, the luckiest person in the world. That's that was the feeling, right? Yeah, I was employed by a manager that I really liked and the team was awesome and the manager was really great. We just had such a good time in that first department uh, that I worked for first as a student and then as a real employee. So it was great. I just simply had a great time. I was learning a lot, getting new skills and I was having fun. So I would now have uh, two questions for two Martas. And none of that Marta is actually the Marta that is sitting in front of me. So now I would ask a question to Marta from the teenage uh, time. Do you think that Marta from teenage time would expect that Marta to find a job in Denmark and be so happy with the corporate job? Do you think that this is what your teenage vision of your life was. So actually, it's quite funny because, as I said, I never had a concrete idea what I could do. And I had many ideas. We explored only the one about being a psychologist because that was like some sort of a hard calling. But actually, when we were doing this kind of visions for ourselves with a group of friends, actually, the way we saw me with this group of closest friends was actually as a successful corporate uh, person with uh, kids that is just rocking it all, you know, successful marriage, successful mother, successful corporate, whatever employee. So there was this kind of vision as well. Yeah, it's actually quite fascinating because I remember I remember that conversation we had very clearly. And I remember that we were talking with some of our friends, where do we see ourselves, but not how do I see myself, but how do I see Marta, how other friends see Marta. And this is actually what we were saying, that you will be a successful employee in a corporation with a high profile career, with a happy marriage, with kids, and you will just have it all. So I think it's quite congruent what have happened to you on your professional path with the image we and also probably afterwards you had about yourself in the teenage years. But now a second question I have is a question to Marta that just got the job in that company that you really wanted to get the job. So that Marta who is now starting her career in a corporate world and is so happy. Do you think that Marta could ever envision Marta, who is sitting today in front of me, quitting job and starting her own business. 
And that's where it also comes, as I said, I did always have this many ideas. And actually right now it feels it makes so much sense. And I think this is something that actually came to me when we had the interview with Jan about entrepreneurship, that when you're an entrepreneur, you always have it in you, but you maybe have not yet aligned with it or maybe not clicked in, in it. And actually, when I look at my past and how I was being, I actually do have that entrepreneur. I have always had it in me. So uh, I actually don't know how that Marta would feel, but I never was a person that I could see myself. I'm just in one place forever. So I guess Marta that was really happy with getting that job at that point of time would probably not see herself staying in that job for the next 50 years either way. So that's actually quite good point because uh, one thing about you that's certain is that you get, well, I wouldn't maybe say bored, but you like to be challenged by life and by circumstances and by new professional possibilities and endeavors. And you are a learner, uh, which I always admired about you. So actually now when you said that, it does make sense. It does make sense. But please tell us. When was the very first moment when the idea of quitting corporate world and starting your own business came to you? And now I don't mean about the whole uh, big uh, fantastic project of how I will do it, also called the end game. But when the idea started to dawn on you that, okay, I think it's time to try something new. So what I remember very clearly is when I was on the last maternity leave, which is now yeah, my child is turning four, so I guess three, three and a half uh, years ago, that started to come to me. Suddenly, I started to have ideas about business. And it was actually now that I think about it, it was entirely activated at work at the corporation because I was in this fascinating project where we were creating like a startup environment within the company. And I love this project. I was so fascinated by this topic. I really wanted to do it. And this is where I learned about Lean Startup. So that was the time, even though I was in a corporation and I loved it, I was reading books about it. I wanted to contribute with my skills to this startup. And I loved it so much that I realized now that when I realized that this startup does not entirely work in a corporate environment I actually think that I stayed like with you know with all this like lean startup and having an idea and making a minimum viable product to just bring it to the world and test it and improve it and test it and improve it I just loved it so I am just having a realization now <laughs> that it was actually awakened with that project that was really fascinating for me. And from that time, I actually started to have business ideas. Before that, I was not seeing myself as this entrepreneur or someone that could start your own business. I was thinking it's way too hard. And this is no, no, that's no, I am a mother. I need to be able to park, you know, work after working hours to be present for my children. But that would, I guess, be something around three, four years ago. So from uh, the very sparkle, from the very first thought, until today's day, when you are sitting here in front of me, it's ha it has been probably around three, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite a journey. And uh, Marta, I would love to explore that journey with you further and torture you with uh, my wonderful questions. And we will do it hopefully in part two of this interview. Great. Awesome. So be ready. Guys, uh, we will interview Marta. Well, I mean, I will interview Marta and you will listen to that in our next episode. So for now, thank you very much for listening and have a great rest of the day. Thank you for having me here. You are very welcome, Marta. Bye bye. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks!
Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.